Minasan, konnichiwa. Today's video is Keigo practice, since I think all of us could use some extra help when it comes to Keigo. This assumes you're already kind of familiar with Keigo and just want some practice scenarios to reinforce it. So, for example, if we look at this three second clip that I have pulled up here, you can hear the woman was asked, and she responded with, which is the Keigo humble version of and it implies that she's speaking to someone who's above her in status. So I'm basically just going to give you a bunch of these kinds of scenarios and from now on I'm actually going to ask you to pause the video before you hear the response just so that you get the extra practice thinking and coming up with the Keigo sentence yourself before you hear the answer so you don't just listen to them and you actually get practice making the sentences. Sound good? Alright, next example then. Here's a situation where this man just met with the woman on the right side of the screen here that my webcam is kind of covering part of, and he wants to thank her in Keigo for making time to see him. So how would you say, thank you for making time for me in Keigo? Pause the video right now and think about it. Alright, done? Here's what he actually says. So first he puts an O in front of the jikan to make that more polite, but the important part here is this te kudasaru, since normally you'd use te kureru and say jikan o tsukutte kurete arigato gozaimasu. But to up that to keigo, honorific, you use o jikan o tsukutte kudasatte arigato gozaimasu. Alright, let's move on. In this clip, the woman on the left just gave a speech at an event, and the woman on the right here is impressed and coming up to her afterwards to say, can I ask you something? So how would you say that in Keigo? And a hint here is you would want to literally translate, is it okay to ask one thing? So pause and think. Alright, so she actually says, where ukagao is the Keigo humble version of kiku to ask. So normally you could say, hitotsu kiite mo ii desu ka? But hitotsu ukagatte mo ii desu ka? Steps up that politeness factor. And if you really wanted to, you could actually say, hitotsu ukagatte mo yoroshi desu ka? Which upgrades e to the more polite yoroshi if you wanted to do that. These are all very common phrases you hear a lot, so it would probably be good to make a note of this if you haven't heard this before. Anyway, next. Here we have two men talking and this guy wants to ask his boss, do you remember? How would you say that in Keigo? Pause and think. And here's what he says. Where, so normally you just say, but this teimasuka gets changed to the honorific form. So nothing too difficult there. Let's move on to the last one. So for this one, let me actually play the first couple seconds of this first. Okay, so this girl right here, she is visiting a certain home, and the older lady that answers asks, "Dochirasama desu ka?" Dochirasama desu ka? Which is a more polite way of saying "Dare desu ka?" or "Who are you?" Now, let me give you some information about this girl. Her name is Hojo Mikumo and she's a new police officer and the person she's coming to see is a man named Sakuraba who is her senpai. So she starts saying something here. Hajimemashite. Hajimemashite, the standard nice to meet you. And now she's about to say in Keigo, my name is Hojo Mikumo. Sakuraba is here, right? So why don't you pause and think about how you would translate that now. Okay, ready for what she actually says? Let's see. So the first line, Hojo Mikumo to Moshimas. It's a pretty standard way of introducing yourself formally using Mosu, the Keigo humble version of you. And then she says, Sakuraba Senpai Irashaimasyone. Sakuraba Senpai Irashaimasyone. And this uses Irasharu, which as you probably know is the Keigo honorific form of Iru. You might have noticed that she doesn't use the wa or ga particle after sakuraba-senpai, 
and she also adds these extra sentence final particles, yo ne, and this all makes it sound a little bit more casual, but it's still okay overall since it's fairly formal still with the kegel verb. Okay, and so she asks if Sakuraba senpai is here. Now imagine that you're the mom and you want to reply to that saying, he hasn't come home yet in kegel. Think about that and pause. This is going to be the last exercise in the video. All right, let's have a listen. Yeah, mm. So first thing that might have gotten some people is notice the humble te orimasen is used instead of the honorific te irashaimasen because this is a mother talking about her son and for family members you use the humble form. Another small thing is a lot of people probably came up with mada kaite orimasen and are probably wondering what is this kaite kite orimasen. And it's because it's a little bit more natural, since here you're tacking on the kuru to make kaite kuru. And that adds a direction implication to the verb, that the person returning home is away from the speaker right now and is coming home towards the speaker. So in the same way, you could actually say the opposite, kaite iku, in a situation, for example, where maybe you're at the workplace and you ask your coworker something like, Goji ni kaite ikimasu ka? Are you going home at 5? And in this instance, the person is with the speaker now, and the act of returning home would have the direction of going away from the speaker. So back to the original example, you would normally say, Mada kaite kite imasen, but keigoing the sentence makes. Did I just say keigoing? Keigoing the sentence. Making the sentence keigo makes it kaite kite orimasen. Alright, let's just uh, listen to this entire exchange one last time. Alright, well that's it. Minasan, Otsukaresama desu. I hope that this helped with, you know, getting some more Keigo practice. And if you're interested in more, make sure to follow me on Twitter, where I post a lot more smaller examples in addition to these YouTube videos. And make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want more Japanese learning and practice through TV. JLPT for your JLPT exam. Ja, mata ne.